Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today. I am Saurabh Mishra, and I'm part of, part of NASCOM SME BU, uh, which undertakes various initiatives for our small and medium members, uh, you know. And uh, I have the pleasure uh, to have uh, Mr. Sri Srikant Srinivasan, who heads the membership uh, for the NASCOM. Uh, Mr. Molik Vansali, uh, the vice chair of NASCOM National SME Council, he has the company called Net, uh, NetWeb Software based out of Badodra. And, and, and for today's session, we have the uh, sub subject matter expert, Mr. Ankit Bose. Uh, he is the, uh, you know, he has the uh, AI charter at the NASCOM. So without wasting uh, much time, I, I would like to request Mr. Srikant Srinivasan uh, to highlight NASCOM visions on AI and what uh, the plan effort, you know, in this area, which is quite emerging and fastly evolving. Yeah, over to you, uh, Srikant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Saurav. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, thank you very much for this overwhelming response. I think uh, the response has been phenomenal for, uh, for this particular workshop and the two more to go. Um, and just to step back and see on how, uh, I think all of us know that the topic of AI is extremely important. Uh, all of us are very keen to know what more to do. Uh, in fact, when the SME Council meeting uh, happened last month, uh, when they met in person, uh, one thing that came up was we should have a separate pillar of focus on AI. And, and that's how, uh, and that's the genesis for this program. And once we decided that we should say, we said we'll not waste any further time, we'll kickstart, we'll have more of these sessions. Uh, because that's probably one of the key factors in terms of the future readiness that we will create for small and medium enterprises in the country, especially the tech SMEs in the country. And that's where the first of this series is starting off today. With that, uh, thank you, Ankit, for helping us to set this whole thing with the agenda in. And uh, I will now request uh, Malik Bansali, uh, who's not only the vice chair of the NASCOM SME Council, but also the executive council member of NASCOM, to quickly share his views, and then we will go over to Ankit. Over to you, Malik Bhai. Thank you. Thank you, Srikan. Thank you, Saurav, and thank you, Ankit. Thank you, friends, for joining us today. Uh, you know, AI has been a very interesting subject for everyone, for all of us, actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, and before we go into uh, uh, that, uh, you know, in, in, in that direction, in the topic, I would like to brief about, uh, you know, uh, what uh, NASCOM does for small, medium businesses and, uh, you know, through uh, our colleagues and friends at SME Council. Uh, it's the right representation of all uh, small medium businesses across the country. Uh, you know, so we have representations from not just from tier one cities, but 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 every nook and corner and uh, clusters, including tier two, tier three centers, which are emerging very rapidly uh, as far as uh, uh, technology clusters are concerned. Right. So we have a representation, for example, from. Uh, 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 from Guwahati as well, for example, right? And from various different such uh, cities where we believe uh, there is attraction and there is a need of, uh, uh, you know, uh, going out uh, with our initiatives, engaging with our members, engaging with our industries and bring them on board and understand what the needs are for our small, medium businesses and cater to those. So our initiatives are aligned towards what the needs of our small, medium businesses are. Uh, and we have... Uh, at the council been discussing this, deliberating in this, taking various inputs from all our members as well through our service, through our outreach and have identified few strong uh, uh, initiatives across, uh, uh, you know, some very important uh, uh, pillars in a very focused way. One being market access, uh, second being, uh, and of course, market access is always the need of uh, uh, any size of the business, right? And more so with the scaling up ones and the small medium businesses in terms of how to uh, approach to newer markets, how to kind of create sales engine, how do we even understand what the really market needs are, what the trends are and so on, right? And second, of course, very important one is talent. Uh, and we have all gone through uh, the challenges and we are still going through to an extent in terms of uh, how do we build uh, uh, talent? How do we access talent? How do we retain talent? And the HR next or best, best practices around that. So that's the second one. Uh, third uh, is our uh, learning and events. So for example, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but we have a very successful uh, program, which is called as Disha, which is uh, uh, towards mentoring our entrepreneurs or business owners who are, uh, you know, uh, willing to scale up their initiatives, their businesses, but are having one or the other challenges. And these challenges are something which, uh, you know, we all can resonate with possibly have gone through that journey 
and mentors share their views, share their opinions, share their suggestions and experience with these mentees uh, to, to help them grow their business or to at least uh, take on those challenges, uh, you know, by sharing their views and experiences. So that's a very successful program. Uh, and one cohort is likely to be, uh, will begin very soon uh, within the next few weeks. Uh, and, and then we have initiatives like, uh, which we saw uh, during uh, our SME conclave, which happened a few months back, uh, was uh, uh, Inspire Awards, where we kind of, uh, you know, brought out the fantastic, inspiring stories, success stories out there from various different segments and various different categories of uh, uh, SME businesses, maybe uh, service, maybe product, maybe innovations and so on, uh, and, and bring out such best stories and recognize those to be able to further inspire our uh, uh, SM, uh, small medium businesses to uh, you know take, uh, to to take a few uh, you know um, takeaways from there in terms of what we can do to make it better for us and so on right uh, we talked uh, i briefly talked about sme uh, confluence uh, and that's something which we had this time around in pune and in delhi the culmination happened in delhi with the awards but both the uh, confluences at both the places were very well participated um, and in and in that we had uh, one very interesting session, which was done by, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Anand Deshpande, uh, you possibly would know him uh, as founder of Persistent, and he actually went through a uh, workshop in a smaller, uh, concise uh, format, which was like about an hour or so, a little more than that. Uh, and that was about how do we take our businesses to the second orbit, which means in terms of how do we scale, how do we take it to a different league, uh, and therefore it also requires different set of visioning, different type of visioning at, uh, at an organization or from the founders. Uh, with that, what we found that there is a huge interest which has come up from our uh, small medium business entrepreneurs and how do we actually uh, you know, have a larger format of such a workshop. So we are working on that as well to bring such a workshop uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, uh, you know, Anand Deshpande and we will soon be informing you on that. Uh, in which uh, uh, you know uh, we will have uh, one or two days of uh, workshop over two days in my opinion uh, is what we are trying to work towards and we'll soon get back to you on that so that's about the learning and uh, events initiative uh, we also have connect series where actually leaders come and speak and talk and share their experiences share their nuances on how they have some, how they have done few things uh, and learning from those as well and sharing their experiences too uh, one thing which we have very, very uh, uh, well understood that there is equally a need for uh, specific, uh, you know, initiatives, which are uh, things like CSR, things like cybersecurity, uh, diversity and inclusion, and these days ESG as well, as it is becoming very important, right? Uh, environmental sustainability and governance aspect is very important as global customers are looking for uh, uh, such information and such maturity uh, uh, from their suppliers, from their partners and from their vendors as well. So bringing that kind of sensitization and awareness and how do we even uh, go through that if there is an audit or how should we really approach to that through scope on scope to, for example, uh, is, uh, is, is something which is very important to us because we are seeing that it is coming towards us. Now, uh, this has been uh, packed into one uh, uh, box, what we call as uh, special initiatives apart from market access, talent, learning, and events. And one very striking thing which we are noticing around us uh, every now and then, and we read in our media, in newspaper, uh, and hear from our clients as well at times, is about artificial intelligence, right? So we have a very special initiative on that, whereby idea is to actually, now a lot of, lot of uh, things are going on there. We hear a lot, we listen a lot. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, while the opportunity is huge, we need to really clear the cloud in terms of where these opportunities are there, really. Um, and a lot is being said, especially when, uh, you know, uh, generative AI is being talked so much and is being referred every day almost, right? Uh, how do we even think of proof of concept there? But more than proof of concept, does it really have any uh, return on investment? How do we look at that? Uh, so it essentially means more than proof of concept, possibly we need to look at proof of value there, right? And how do we build that? What do we do? Uh, and with that, I'm very happy to have uh, Ankit take over uh, and take us through that journey. Uh, in, uh, I believe we have you know, three such workshops uh, and one is what we are uh, having now and today. Uh, so Ankit, over to you. 
And before that, friends, I'm so happy and so proud to see this Chandrayaan 3 being launched today. And what a momentous uh, uh, day. And hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be very proud with the history being made today. Uh, so we are seeing uh, province of India with technology coming up there uh, everywhere. And AI is uh, 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 equally, I believe, uh, as strong opportunity for us. Very happy to let you know uh, that as Team NASCOM, uh, we were among the first industry possibly across the world, if I'm not wrong, uh, to release responsible AI guidelines, if I'm not wrong, and Srikant, is that correct? Yeah. yeah and, and we are taking a, a lead role there. We are taking lead there, which is very, very uh, good and so proud of that. Over to you, Ankit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Malik. Thank you, Srikant. Uh, and, and very warm uh, afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining and I think I can I can see uh, a very great participation here right so uh, so let me directly jump into the session right so I, we have a you know action packed session and definitely few more workshops coming in so I would want to first start with you know uh, a poll right so this is the agenda what we had right so we had welcome note I think Shrikan and Malik covered that uh, and and the second topic is the meat right uh, here we have four topics we have why what data and AI applied AI use cases or, you know, some more technicalities of computer vision and Gen AI. Uh, third is uh, AI landscape and Gen AI landscape. And then certainly what are the opportunities for, you know, uh, uh, all of us here, right? And then, you know, the trustworthy AI and, and why we need to focus, what are the regulations which are coming up, right? So that's the agenda for the day. I would want to take a quick poll, right? So, uh, uh, you know, we have 168 participants here. Uh, how many uh, would want me to focus maximum time in which section, right? So section, I will call the section one, uh, two, three, four, right? So maximum time, which one you would want me to, uh, you know, uh, spend two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which one? So uh, one, how many, uh, you know, sort of raise hands? Can, can we get a hands on one? Ankit, I think they've already started putting it on the chat. Oh, great. Wait, wait, did they put the number? One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, let me go through. I'm seeing a lot of twos there. Okay, so I think that interest would be because of Jenny. I, I am seeing so, a lot of two. Yeah. Okay. So I, I see two and three predominantly, right? And then I think uh, we'll spend a lot of time there, right? So thank you for that. Uh, you know, quick feedback, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, again, I think uh, most of us would be interested in Gen AI here, so I will spend maximum time in that than computer vision. Right? But again, let me let me jump into this, okay? So, uh, so guys, I think we all know, uh, you know, analytics, AI, you know, have been there for ages, right? Now, uh, what's the... Uh, can you uh, still see my screen or is it... Uh, yeah. Ankit, can you just put it on a slideshow more? There is a request from the audience. Uh, Saurabh, is this in slideshow mode? No, no not yet. Yeah. No, no. No? Okay. Uh, so I have two streams connected. That could be the reason. Uh, so give me just 10 seconds. Uh, No. no, no, not yet. You you just click on this, uh, you know. So it, I, I, and it was actually referring to my. Uh, uh, is it there? No, not yes. Yet. No, no, you're there. No, you're there. No, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 So, so let me let me move. Right. So I think uh, we'll start with basics of data in here. So again, uh, what is basics? So uh, so uh, for any analytics or, or or you know AI, we need uh, data, right? And that's a key. Uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, many legendary people have uh, told many things about data, right? Data is a new oil. So in God, all we trust and, and, and others should bring data, even our spouse. Uh, but again, I think, I think so data uh, is definitely uh, very important and it should be emphasized at all, all levels before we even think of analytics, insights, or, you know, uh, uh, probably AI, right? And, and and what do we extract from AI? Right? How how does we create this oil out of you know raw whatever we have? So let's see briefly that right. So again, uh, data 
was always there, uh, mostly in our database format. But now, with the advent of big data, it is in multi multi format, right? So it is in audio, text, video, uh, so many different formats, right? So uh, so that is big data, right? Uh, and and we all are generating phenomenal data, right? So if you see this on the right side, the velocity of data getting generated per day, uh, at, at, you know, even with TikTok, uh, Twitter, Insta, is is pretty huge, right? And and this is all of us getting generated. Uh, if you see uh, some other, uh, you know, views, right? So, like a single jet engine now, it, it's so much digitized, it's so much, uh, you know, filled with technology or, or you know, uh, uh, probably electronic, uh, you know, IOTs which are generating data. Uh, it's more than 10 terabytes, right? In 30 minutes. Uh, and then uh, probably uh, so, so many flags going in. 30 minutes, probably it will be petabyte of data just generated from jet engine, right? So, so that's, that's massive, right? Now, uh, Again, as I told, data is generated from everything, right from uh, our, our biometrics, from a watch what we wear to, you know, the the Google map what we, you know, use. Uh, and then it's getting used in multiple formats. Uh, uh, so, again, I will skip this, but again, for everyone's understanding, I think uh, this is the size of data. Right? So, we are talking about uh, petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, right? That's 10 to the raise 80. Yotabyte is 10 to the raise 21. Right? So, that gives us view. So, kilobyte is just thousand, I think it's 10 to the raise three. Right? So that's the range of data what we are talking about. So it's, it's in 10 to the raise 18 and 21. That's how. Yes. Again, uh, data has six elements, right? six characteristics. Volume, velocity, variety, veracity, value, and, uh, you know, veracity, right? So again, uh, I will skip all this. I think uh, these are basics, but uh, we'll spend more time on the next step, right? Again, uh, uh, data is again in three formats, structured, unstructured, and semi-structured. Uh, I will again uh, skip that. I understand most of us will have some understanding, right? Structured is nothing but in our, uh, you know, SQL database. Uh, unstructured is basically something generated through Google search and some, some uh, or, or probably through our image, right? Uh, something like that. Then semi-structured is XML files what we generate, right? While uh, using website or in, any of that. Right? So that's what it is. Now, how is data getting leveraged? This should be of insight or probably interest to everyone what, what we are thinking here, right? So, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, I will skip to yeah, this slide. Right? So, so raw data uh, is is a base data right, which is getting generated. It is sorted. It is uh, you know visually presented, which human brain can actually you know visualize and understand something out of it. Then uh, through that visual cues, you generate a story, right? And that gen story is used to actually generate actionable insight and products, right? So that that's that's a you know very basic. Uh, you know, steps of getting insight of, you know, actionable insight from a data. Now, let's see what's the next level, right? So, you have raw, uh, you know, uh, data. You basically <coughs> generate a meaning out of that. Once you have a meaning, you generate context. Once you have context, you generate, you know, wisdom, uh, knowledge to wisdom. That, that's, that's a hierarchy, right? And it's actually, this wisdom is either prescriptive, uh, you know, predictive, all of that. We'll see just in a minute, right? So, again, uh, in, in technical terms, right, this is the four layer of uh, analytics. First is, you know, from data, uh, you are generating descriptive analytics, which is more visual, right? Then uh, you are using the data in next, uh, you know, sort of uh, label, which is more diagnostic. Then using that data in in, uh, in a better way, that, which is predicting your, you know, anomalies, predicting your failures, all of that, right? And then you're using the prediction in the understanding of the system, you're creating prescription. Now that prescription is used for decision support, right? So, so that's how it is. Now, after decision support, it can take in one step ahead. You can actually use that decision support and human loop and automate a lot of things, right? So that's how the whole hierarchy works, right? So uh, from descriptive analytics to you know automation, I think that is how data is getting leveraged at various level of analytics, right? And and, and AI is embedded at each level to generate uh, a lot of different uh, insights. Right? So AI is a technique in uh, analytics here. Let's let's term it that way, right? So uh, again, uh, so if you see AI, AI right now is embedded in all our life, right? Uh, right from the uh, route we choose using Google or, or probably we talk to Siri and we ask it to do some action or probably, uh, you know, recommendations what we get on Netflix, right? Or we get calls from our, our banks and insurance for <laughs> what sort of insurance products we should do or what sort of investments we should do, right? So AI is embedded everywhere. Uh, we, we definitely can be ignorant, but again, uh, definitely we are uh, in the AI uh, play, right? So uh, systems deployed with AI are working with us and around us, right? So 
so so that's the reason I think we have to be more uh, aware of the data we are generating, what AI you know uh, uh, systems we are working with, and as, as SMEs, I think uh, uh, we have to start using the data in our you know whatever product portfolio what we have, and and start going higher up the chain. The higher the chain is, I think again this right. So uh, with whatever data you have, you dis build descriptive analytics, you build diagnostic analytics, you help customer predict. And you definitely give prescription. All of this is definitely a hierarchy, but again, none of that is, you know, like step by step. You can always jump from descriptive to prescriptive also, right? So it depends on the use case what we have, right? And, and the data what we have. And the definitely the uh, the uh, motivation what customers and we as, you know, technologists or, uh, you know, enterprises or entrepreneurs we have, right? So that's how it, it is done. Now, let me move to uh, probably one more level up, right? What is AI, right? Uh, Again, and what are the forms of AI? Uh, so again, AI has been there for ages, and you know, uh, with Gen AI in in, in uh, last December, we have seen major shift, right? So, uh, and we'll see what is Gen AI briefly. I'll try to conceptually make you understand how uh, Gen AI systems think, right, or how they operate, uh, so that at least we know when we work with them, uh, uh, you know, uh, how does that operate? Uh, so let's move on. Okay, so again. AI uh, is a, is a uh, you know, superset. Then we have uh, machine learning and then we have deep learning. And deep learning again has, you know, NLP, it has computer vision, uh, CNN, and then it has generative AI, right? So we'll see one side of that. But again, that's a, that's a whole modality. Uh, if we go next, again, I think uh, the types of AI could be, you know, narrow AI, general AI, super AI, right? Again, these are their higher hierarchies, right? Again, uh, functionally, if you see, they can be reactive machines, they can be limited machines. They can have theory of mind, they can be self-awareness, right? Uh, but again, I think that's uh, pretty high up in the chain. I think we have not reached uh, self-awareness level yet. Uh, we're still at a very, you know, reactive or limited memory sort of space, right? right. Again, from the right side, if you see uh, AI techniques, right, uh, are ML-based, are, uh, again, supervised, unsupervised. Again, in that you have NLP as a uh, separate classification. And again, if you go, uh, you know, one more classification is vision based, right? The image, image recognition, machine vision, speech is again, uh, you know, uh, speech to text, text to speech is again one more modality. Uh, uh, again, uh, AI techniques are specifically used for, you know, a lot of uh, robotics uh, sort of use cases, right? So again, these are some techniques what are there. Right? So I will not go into detail. I, I, I hope uh, you can you can probably take a screenshot if you are interested, go deep and read on that, right? So, uh, so let me move next. Uh, again, this this uh, also is a very good slide, right? Which gives you a uh, you know a curve of uh, various current AI technologies and and technologies which are going to come, right? This uh, if you see, uh, you know, uh, deep learning, uh, NLP, you know, uh, speech recognition, biometric, decision system, right? All of these are uh, in, in in current play, right? So again, uh, NLG is basically your Gen AI, right? It is just uh, between your creation and survival stage. Right? So it's still getting created. So there's a long way which is uh, which will take it to survival growth and then you know sustenance and equilibrium, right? Uh, probably and then decline. But again, I think it's at a very nascent early stage. That's what I would want to you know let you uh, know and understand. Again, if you see uh, the more uh, better technologies like you know image or video analysis, right, or computer vision. Uh, they are at a higher rate, right? Again, virtual agents, virtual agents, uh, which was which was conversation AI, which is again at a growth pace because the the technologies have been established, the uses have been established. It's uh, just about deploying them, right? So that's how it is. I just would want to tell you a difference between NLG and you know computer vision or image analysis, right? That's how it stands. So let's so let me move next. And and, and uh, so the so I think. Uh, we know there has been data, there has been AI, right? But why are why are we talking it about now? Right? Why is there was so much uh, there, there's so much discussion? There's so much you know uh, probably deliberation on that right now. Three main reasons. One is vast amount of data is getting generated, which we saw in big data. Uh, mega computing powers are available, so the the Moore's law is hitting the roof, and and I think uh, the GPU systems which H100, which uh, which you know Nvidia has, uh, is really uh, creating big HPC or, you know, uh, computing environment in, in a small cluster, right? And there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, need, uh, you know, and use cases, which can make all this affordable, right? And, and the data in the compute is 
available at you know affordable range for enterprises at at the same time uh, you know uh, startups and smes and at, at the same time you know individuals also so that's a, these are three drivers why we are having so much you know buzz about gen ai and so much you know uh, new new use cases coming every uh, you know out of it right? so that, these are three drivers now let, let me move next uh, again uh, i will spend less time on competition and spend more time on gen ai so that i can give you that understanding now uh, we'll see two use cases of uh, applied ai use cases again right so one is computer vision so computer vision what it does is basically uh, again uh, the the older computer vision use cases uh, mostly on the discriminative side we'll see what is discriminative what is generative but again on the discriminative side they is to uh, take input data okay and and basically uh, create a, a model using the training data to discriminate what this object is right so if there's a this a 100 uh, or 1000 cat photos you give to the system then that system or that model will basically identify you know what is uh, the next object you're giving is it a cat or is it not a cat right? similarly so it's discriminating uh, so that was the technology used uh, with jenny i think this is also changing but again uh, let me uh, make you explain how is it getting deployed uh, either uh, discriminative or jenny at uh, on ground on field what are the opportunities Uh, all the use cases on that right so so uh, we'll see that in the next slide and if you have to come back we'll come back right so uh, yeah so facial recognition is one very classic use case right so it's getting utilized or deployed at various levels even some of the uh, countries are deploying it for uh, you know uh, policing effective policing object recognition is one more use case right so uh, you can basically uh, use computer vision to identify objects Uh, like uh, you know uh, whether uh, uh, let me give an example right so uh, object recognition is used uh, in one of the f1 races to count how many times the brand logo was uh, you know showcased on the f1 car so that was an object okay which was uh, detected probably you know let's say uh, vodafone having a logo on uh, that f1 car and and that many time it coming out so computer vision was used to count that many time and subsequently pay them uh, on that right so these are you know uh, use cases or even in safety right uh, if, if it's a manufacturing unit and you have safety gears required and and a, and a, you know uh, probably a, a worker there is coming inside without a effective gear probably helmet or you know the proper shoes or whatever it's getting uh, you know recorded or it's getting uh, identified that this personnel is not effectively geared to enter the premises right so so that's basically the the ob- object recognition right augmented reality is uh, is a new uh, ball game basically what it does is uh, it, it's basically a mix of uh, you know a lot of different technique but it creates a reality uh, a, a virtual avatar of you in in uh, in web right uh, which can have very your attributes you can decide that and all that right? again that's an uh, way of your decision process right? again gaming is also using a lot of computer vision medical imaging is very very important right so uh, there are models and there are deployment which are done which can effectively detect cancer right uh, i i was reading about one use case which was used by one of the you know uh, medical professionals or medical uh, team to detect what sort of uh, you know disease you have with just the retina scan right uh, again uh, self driving vehicle is again one more use case right where uh, you know the the drivers uh, the, the the car is detecting what's the the adas uh, you know deployment is like that it has multiple different uh you know uh, sensor but one is vision sensor with lidar and other but again vision sensor is basically detecting if any object is coming in front of it or not so that's that again uh, security system you know physical security is also uh, one of the use cases so these are uh, typical use case of uh, computer vision let me try to see if i can show you some demo we uh, you know uh, this is next table of example right like uh, if you see uh, you know the second one is basically object detection right? so people detection how many people uh this is reflection of a you know uh of a insurance company trying to see detect if the car is you know uh, before giving before allotting the insurance if there there are any damages right uh, similarly uh, this is basically uh, you know scrap detection so this guy having a handheld uh, camera is trying to detect whether the you know the the uh, the door is effectively built right so uh, so these are some use cases right we we'll try to see one demo i think that will give us uh, some more view a uh, very interesting demo this is uh, at a place which is unreachable uh, at a very high with 
500 kb line uh, you know uh, this in computer vision deployed to detect the deterioration so let's see that you see here right so uh, the drone uh, uh, and, and there are you know uh, deterioration happening here right so if you see in this nuts and bolts so computer vision at the inaccessible place is getting used to see if the the parts are getting you know deteriorated otherwise uh, it was a manual inspection which was so laborious and so you know uh, probably uh, potentially harmful to a human life right so but again with computer vision they have, you can either deploy a drone or you can deploy a fixed camera which can take you know uh, pointed photos and, and detect right uh, can you give me a chart chart Sorry, uh, thanks. Uh -huh. So you can see it's trying to uh, right. so batteries uh, going up. So I'm just putting a charger. So you see there are so much rust happened on this uh, various nuts and bolts, right? Which which is really inaccessible. And and the major part is with manual detection. Also, you'll have to you cannot cover so many different angles. With the drone, you can cover so many different angles, right? So, so again, I think uh, uh, it's detecting, it's doing object detection. At the same time, it's uh, detecting the deterioration. So, I will take a pause of this. I think it will give other examples of this. But again, I think effectively, I think we understand what is this doing. So, uh, so let me let me move to the next slide. This is one more very classic example. Which is doing a visual uh, tire inspection, right? So, and the parts. So this is, this is basically problem identification. What essentially uh, the computer vision is used to do is whether the spark plug was connected or not, right? Now, this is the next example. How many different objects are there, right? This can be used in a shop, uh, in a retail store, or, or in a warehouse, right? This is to uh, do, uh, you know, barcode scan of the product. Right, and inspect whether the product is good or bad. Right, the logo is correct or not. So, again, this is influencing of the light, the color. Right, so this is a hardware a computer getting detected whether the RAM is properly fitted, it's seated or unseated. Right. For all this, you need labor. But if you have computer vision uh, and you have a remote support, they can come and essentially help you. Right? So I think we'll take a pause on that. But again, I think effectively computer vision were uh, various, uh, you know, deep learning techniques which were used to uh, detect uh, or identify objects. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can use it for various uses. We have discussed that and we have seen that. Right? So. So these are certain examples, right? So uh, uh, with Gen AI, I think a lot of this techniques like CNN and others are getting modified, but the usage of that will not get modified. We will not see the usage of it, but again, I think, uh, sorry, we will not see the, the technique is such, the CNN technique or various techniques, but again, I think uh, new techniques like digital transformers, others are coming, which will totally uh, change the dynamic, what, uh, you know, uh, the techniques for you, but usage will remain same, right? So, uh, so let me move to uh, the next section. Yeah. So so that was computer vision. So uh, and then I I will I will encourage you to put some questions in chat if you have right. And at the last we have uh, ten to 12, 15 minutes. If we can answer some of them, we'll definitely answer. Uh, so any question coming to you, please feel free to put it on the chat. Right. Uh, so now now comes the interesting you know sort of uh, part which is Gen AI, and we are uh, probably. I think uh, 330, 340, right? So, so let's let's understand what is Gen AI. Right? So, uh, let me run through a simple exercise in, in a 
smaller forum, I would have asked you this question directly. But again, I think uh, let's see this. Uh, you know, uh, sentence uh, in a the in the theater. I watched dash right. Uh, generally, theater. I watched. The answer will be mostly you know uh, movie right. So it will mostly not be match gameplay. Either it can be other, but again, mostly it will be movie. Basically, what are we doing based on the you know the set uh, English words what we see. We are trying to predict what words you know uh, can be coming next, right? So this is so I'm trying to give you a view how human brain articulates language and how you know uh, the the uh, the generative AI of the LLMs are trying to uh, you know generate that next word. Right? So I'm just giving you that view. So human brain uh, will generally mostly say I watch the movie. Movies mostly the answers I get here. Right? So similarly, on a Wednesday I watched a. So generally, uh, if it's a you know game season, uh, people will say I watched a match, right? So then uh, you know game movie play. So that's how the answer will come. You will never say I watched the you know game. That's generally not what how it knows. I watched a movie. Possibly I watched the play. If at all you are uh, you know uh, enthusiast of play, you will go and watch. But again, it the answers could be different. But again, uh, probably uh, generally the answer what I get is I watched the match. Right? Again, this is from a premise that. The words which are there, the day, and what's the season going on? Say IPL season going on, you'll say match most of the time. Right? So uh, that's for exercise. If I change the uh, the word from uh, you know uh, er to the right on the Wednesday, day, I watch the right again. Uh, it could differ, right? So based on the last word, we will think the next word. Right? So I'm just trying to give how we generate uh, you know uh, next words or the sentence or whatever. So uh, that's how we do, right? The match will again be an answer mostly. So, so what do what did we do, right? Based on our uh, you know understanding of our you know context, our life, uh, what's happening around us uh, in in common sense and historical knowledge, we are trying to predict uh, you know uh, a set of uh, sequence of words which uh, is generally what we have always learned, right? So, so we the most. Uh, you know, uh, worst of the guy, or uh, probably you know, English people will also not talk like match cricket, watch the eye, right? Jenny will say, I watch the cricket match, right? Uh, uh, so, and, and if you see, uh, I watch the cricket match uh, will be more preferred than I watch the cricket game. Uh, we don't say that, uh, you know, game, match is more preferred. Again, this is how we uh, as humans have, uh, you know, uh, articulated uh, a language. Historically, right? Again, this can change in in, in various uh, you know scenarios. If you are in India, you will see this. If you are probably uh, in some other country, uh, you will see it differently, which has been pronounced uh, you know in that country. So what we are doing is based on our uh, you know historical knowledge and the context around us, and and the situation we are you know predicting the uh, statement and the words, right? So that's what we are doing. Now let's see you know uh, what does uh, LLM do? LLM basically is doing the same thing, right? So, what it does is it has a set of vector, a set of matrix, which has a large corpus of English words, right? So, if you write in that, uh, I watched a, okay? If you see, I watched a, uh, if you see here, based on the English, uh, you know, uh, vocabulary and, you know, uh, language and the, you know, sentences fed to that, it will predict a three fourth of a time movie than a match. Okay? So, again, what it is doing is it's basically, uh, uh, generating words or words, uh, whether called token in, in a language or LLM language, it's generating token uh, based on the probability of that token coming next, you know, uh, after uh, that sequence. So it is also generating a token. Okay, but the basic difference between this and us is we we are you know humans we have uh, more common sense we have more you know better uh, you know uh, understanding of the context than just the a, a table of you know probabilities, right? So it, it has just table of probabilities, and it will generate next one. Right? So that is the current state. It can you know perhaps uh, better itself, but again, I think still it will not have the emotions and the you know the undercurrents what generally humans have. Right? Uh, so so that is what LLMs are doing. Essentially, they are nothing but token generator, or they are nothing but you know next pixel generator in terms of image. So based on the you know the current uh, corpus of data which you feed to it. It will create a probable, you know, uh, either uh, uh, you know, matrix where it has next 
tokens probability or pixels and it will generate either a token or a pixel that is again a you know a sentence or an image based on that so it's just a token generator without any intelligence wisdom sentiments emotions what even has right? so uh, just want to emphasize that uh, that is what it is right so uh, let me move on next right? again this is going into more technical details i will skip this for now uh, again i was trying to tell you this earlier right? so ai is there then you have ml which is subset then you have deep learning and the deep learning has again two subsets uh, which is llm and gen ai right so uh, again gen ai could be so llm is focused on text uh, gen ai could be you know even image the visual transfers are image right then you can even have uh, you know uh, other uh, models which are coming out right so that's how it is positioned so gen ai is a subset of uh, deep learning and llm and gen ai has a subset right so llm could also be you know non gen ai based also so uh, the gen ai base is mostly transformer based right? so that's how it is uh, currently which is in trend so again the same thing what i was telling you right uh, you know the comparison of predictive ml that is discriminative uh, modeling versus gen ai model right? so now uh, the predictive ml is basically discriminating so it's basically getting a corpus of data uh, and a labels with that it's basically trying to uh, you know differentiate the next item which has been presented what is it right so it's trying to discriminate Whereas uh, you know, Gen AI is uh, using the unstructured data given to it without labels, uh, you know, uh, unsupervised, and it's generating some sort of uh, you know content, new content. Now that content can be used for a new content generation, classification, various other parameters or various other views, but that's essentially what it's doing, right? So, uh, so that's the difference, right? The the old uh, practices of distributive ML versus uh, Gen AI. So old uh, distributive techniques were more on, uh, you know, uh, differentiation, differentiation of the current data with labels. So you have to do, you have to have supervised learning there, right? You have to basically label what data is here, and then it will discriminate. This is cat. This is dog. This is you know uh, a, a car. This is a truck. Right? So that's what it will do. Whereas Gen AI will take that corpus and then generate new content out of that. So that's the difference, right? Basically, you just want to give you that understanding. Um, so uh, again, uh, uh, Gen AI, uh, you know, again, I will skip this is again going to more uh, technical degrees. Uh, yeah, so again, uh, I will skip this, I will go to this one. Right? So again, uh, Gen AI based, uh, you know, uh, there are types of Gen AI, right? it is based on data again, right? So it could be text data, text data could be used to translate uh, text, summarize text, it can be used to Q and A. It can help you with grammar correction. Okay. Uh, the other uh, uh, way it could be used is text could be used to generate new image, image generation or video generation. Similarly, text could be used for audio generation. Okay. Uh, new music generation, or it could be used to uh, even generate text to speak. Right? And then I think the the third what uh, fourth what we see here is text could be used for decision support in games. Right. So again, that's one. Uh, you know, example where text is the input source and output could be multi. Similarly, image can be one input source. And then you can have, you know, uh, uh, captioning them done on image. You can have object de uh, detection on image. You can have, you know, uh, visual q and A's. You can search image, right? So that those could be could some of the output. Similarly, image could be used for, uh, you know, super resolution, you know, image uh, completion. So uh, there's very good example, which I've seen, you know, you give half image, and then uh, you know decide a bigger fit the the gen AI model will auto develop all the uh, you know sides of that it will expand up here so again based on uh, what was there in the middle right? so excellent use here right same, same uh, the it, image can be used to generate video so there's a very classic uh, you know use case which is uh, deployed for multiple uses uh, multiple you know scenarios which is uh, image to 3d uh, you know generation where what you're doing is you're taking multiple different photos of a you know a, a object or a, a or a place right and then you're creating 3d model of that now it can be uh, very effectively used for various things predictive maintenance right it could be used for uh, you know uh, 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 forensic sort of use cases right so again multiple different use cases from image to video right and animation which is written so again i think uh, these were the 
types of uh, gen ai use cases or probably outputs based on the data so uh, let me move to next right so again gen ai when we talk right so again there are various uh, issues with gen ai i think hallucination uh, you know again uh, bias uh, you know uh, all that is very very true so when we use systems we have to definitely have human in loop so that you know we basically uh, uh, detect if there's any hallucination happening right uh, every if any data is incorrect any if you find any bias in the data right? so and then the reason could be the model is not trained enough with uh, data it could have a noisy or <laughs> distorted data the context given to it is not very clear right the constraint defined is not you know very clear right? this could be some of the reasons of hallucination and other issues but again i think uh, when whenever we use gen ai sort of scenarios we should definitely be very aware of uh, such uh, fallacies which can be you know reduced by human the right so again uh, one important uh, you know uh, technique is prompting with prompting and fine tuning you can basically uh, generate a very good output from uh, the the gen ai you know use case what you have deployed right so you can essentially uh, use uh, you know multiple techniques of prompting few short prompting chain of thoughts multiple uh, techniques are there which can be used to extract the right information from the large language model right? so again this is a technique i think uh, summarization writing keyword extraction all of this can be you know used for that so huh, again i think uh, 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 you know a term is been used llms and foundation models foundation model is essentially a set of uh, model which will have multi modal data text image speech uh, structured data 3d signals and that will be given to a single multi modal foundation model which can basically be adapted to various tasks right? like qna sentiment analysis image capturing object detection you know a, a lot of them these are some examples but again i think uh, so the the models are not not just single data oriented it can be multi modal also uh, again this was the first transformer architecture which was you know sort of uh, launched in uh, 2017 by google i will not go into detail but again the major thing you have to understand here is the attention mechanism i think that's what uh, you would hear right so i'll skip this for now uh, and i will skip this also for now because we have to jump into the the landscape and the opportunities for this but again i think uh, it's it's good to understand what is attention mechanism uh, what is multi agent attention to someone is technical who want to understand but again, i think that's what is uh, good to understand so let me move to next again uh, uh uh you know if you see uh, the generative ai one classic example is gpt implementation right? so gpt3 was uh, so in fact gpt1 till gpt3 uh, was there available ever since right but in gpt3 uh, open ai created a wrapper called chat gpt which is an application deployed on a gpt model now gpt model was built on 45 terabyte of some data right approximately and it had 175 billion parameters what is this parameter this is basically the the table which has various uh, probabilities of each words coming next right so uh, that's what uh, was done now gpt4 is basically uh, much bigger than that it is said so it shows 1 billion 1 trillion parameter it is having around 1.7 trillion parameter which it was just uh, you know uh, again uh, came out recently but again i think see the difference right gpt3 is so small dot it's like you know uh, a moon and this is probably a sun right that's a difference so the bigger the uh, the you know the matrix what you have probability the big the better and the accurate answers will be right? that's how it is. so gpt3 3.5 4 there's a huge difference because of the data science given to it data corpus at the same time the the parameter what it has which is uh, 1 trillion 1.7 trillion plus right so again that is one thing i wanted to just give you uh, an example similarly if you see there are other models which are coming from google like bard uh, llama the bard is again uh, bard of palm right these are again google models which are significantly big but there are smaller models coming like you know uh, again uh, llama is a smaller model uh, you know uh, mosaic uh, is a smaller model falcon is a smaller model 7 billion model Uh, but these are very specific vertical or small use cases model right? but again uh, uh, similarly there are big models also like this but again i think uh, so there are all sort of uh, jona right from a 7 billion model uh, to a 175 billion model to a uh, you know 1.7 trillion model 
it is based on your uh, use case your domain your uh, current uh, you know sort of uh, data corpus your uh, you know compute and environment all of that is resources you have to deploy and choose the model so you can also uh, essentially choose between open and closed right so open or closed is a decision pretty simple like right? uh, you will use either open ai services by microsoft or you will use open ai or you will use probably one of the services from google uh to build you know uh, apis to call you know uh, various uh, you know uh, tasks from that api right or, or from the models like right? gpt or bard models open is basically using open source models to fine tune them okay and, and and give it specific task and deploy it for your use case right again that requires more uh, you know technical capability and know how and also you know data to build that this is much more uh, simple so i think depending on your use case your uh technology or team you will choose that right again uh, uh that's that's a decision point here i think these are some examples of use cases of gen ai right so uh, uh we have discussed about but again these are uh, you know domain wise use cases like marketing a lot of contents are getting generated content when we talk uh, uh are not captured here i've defined some uh, 21 uh, you know attributes to a marketing personal right from audio generation video generation you know image generation blog all of that right and and what are the tools available for that so all of that can be augmented with gen ai tools which can effectively help him or her uh, you know better his productivity right? and and reduce the time of delivery similarly operations right uh, you can uh, use effective gen ai you know uh, and conversational ai combinations which can make your customer experience pretty smooth right which can uh, help you you know even uh, Uh, you know, keep a whole transaction, you know, uh, accountable, right? So, right from a uh, not accountable, but again, uh, in terms of continuity, right? So, Ankit coming in and chatting with you today versus Ankit coming after two months. So, the system will know what Ankit uh, is there in your, you know, banking environment. What is my, you know, uh, uh, you know, probably corpus of data and what I have with you versus what issues I have, and it will give you answer based on that. So, that is what Gen AI can enable you, right? But again. Uh, uh the other is anomaly detection is also one use case for operations image spaces at the same time you know your ai ops spaces right so you can do a lot of uh, anomaly detection using this uh, you can uh, again move to uh, other area like code generation documentation is again one example right uh, for list risk and legal i think uh, drafting legal documents you know contracts patents again at the first level is is a use case right? you will always need a expert to view whether that content is correct not correct uh, you know it is as per your customer needs you need that but again it will reduce your you know 10 hours window to probably 3 hours so uh, so that is what it can do for you but it definitely believe me you need a human in the loop for all of them right? uh, hr again it can help you uh, do initial screening of the candidate right uh, again uh, you should have proper measures deployed so that it should not be biased it should not be you know sort of uh, uh, creating some fallacies in the selection again uh, employee utilization it can help a lot of ways right like right, right now if you would have seen copilot uh, for office it really helps you increase your uh, you know uh, a lot of employees work on office excel word or uh, sorry powerpoint excel word all of that right copilot can really uh, transform that whole journey for you right? so in search a uh, very good example is bing right you can definitely try bing part both of them uh, bing chat bard chat both are really transformed version of search you can actually get content which you can actually use right instead of just searching and going through each web page it is changing that whole game right so these are certain use cases of genie and now we'll take a pause and then we'll move to next session that is basically again i will skip this this is these are various models and you know uh, various companies are into those models this is this, this is way of evaluating gen ai model i think i will skip this for this audience now uh, i'll skip this uh, now we'll jump to the ai landscape and opportunity right? um, okay so this is the global ai landscape you see this right so uh, the global business total business is basically uh, 2025 billion right? and it is growing at 21% cagr <clears throat> uh, that's phenomenal right so 2025 billion dollars by 
this is something what we are expecting okay now uh, if you see uh, the uh, the uh, you know the right side the use cases drug discovery auto mill image recognition conversation analytics call intent discovery customer service chatbot all of these are the use cases what are the top use cases right again uh, if you see again coming back to middle you know uh, countries across world are adopting ai at a very huge speed now believe me genial ai are boardroom discussions it is not only with the you know the business folks or the technical folks or the cio cdo it is in a boardroom where ceo was getting question from their board member that you know whether are our business uh, equipped to handle the genai right or, or the wave of ai which uh, if we don't do whether we will be left behind our competitors right? that's a discussion happening so that's an opportunity for all smes right so we have to gear up our business and and if if possible create an extra revenue line on ai right? which can start from basic descriptive uh, you know uh, uh, diagnostic predictive Right. All of all of that, right? Uh, and automated. Right? It's uh, you have to start from somewhere. But again, it's an opportunity for SMEs, enterprises uh, who have access to customer, because uh, the CEOs and boardrooms are discussing on AI, right, and the data. So this is a global view. Let me give you a, a US view. Again, US uh, the market size by twenty twenty two is uh, you know one twenty eight billion dollars, right? And and again, eighty five out of hundred US you know enterprises are thinking of adopting a ai right uh, federal budget only for r&d is 1.8 billion dollar right? so uh, again use cases are again on the same line like drug discovery so uh, food systems is a is a new one agri is a very important use case uh, so use cases there will be some up and down but again this is what it is right? so if we go to india right uh, india right? india the market size is 7.8 billion Uh, expected by 25 and 20 percent CAGR. Right now, um, uh, I will give you one more uh, classic uh, you know, sort of uh, number. Uh, we did a report called Data AI and Skills uh, Landscape Report. In that, what we found was uh, the need for data and AI skill set in the US is around nine lakh. Right, out of that, uh, you know, they have around six lakhs. Uh, you know, capacity. India, it's around six lakhs, uh, and we have around four lakh. Sixteen thousand capacity, but the professionals, what uh, you know, uh, the growth of the people, there is one or two percent. Here it is around ten percent, and and I think U.S. being the number one, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably a, uh, country who is having demand and supply, and we are the second number, and all other countries are just behind us. Right? So, so very important uh, to tap this talent and utilize it in our you know uh, businesses, our customers. Right? So though there's a gap, but again still. Uh, so this ten percent or nine percent was you know uh, last year. Now with Gen AI coming in, I think it's even faster. The growth of Indian uh, AI professionals or probably growth of uh, generation of Indian AI professionals is pretty fast. Uh, there are good schemes coming from government to skill mass level. Right? So again, I think uh, very good phenomenal opportunity there. Right? Uh, if you are having business in India for globe post, right? So and India is a very hot. Or pool of that. If you see again uh, the next level detail on skilling or, or probably supply, uh, Bangalore is the hotspot. Uh, you know, uh, Mumbai is the hotspot. NCL is hotspot. You have uh, then Hyderabad and then Chennai. Right? That this is the hotspot, right? Again, uh, Bangalore being number one, uh, others being two or three, just very nearby. So that's the hotspot. Right? Again. Uh, Indian AI ecosystem is very vibrant, so uh, a lot of AI startups are there. So around two thousand AI startups are there, uh, and then I think we work personally or probably uh, in various uh, ways, at least with forty percent of them, right? So NASCOM and uh, the team, I think here we work with them very closely. We are seeing the vibrancy and the innovation happening in AI ecosystem. It's pretty vibrant. Right? So I will encourage all of you also to you know sort of uh, uh, find a. a New stream, if possible, for your you know business line on AI. Again, uh, research and you know uh, patent also is very vibrant. Uh, there's a lot of research getting generated from academia, which should be reverse coming back to you know industry. But again, I think uh, it should be mix of both. Uh, that's what it is. Right? So let me move to next. Uh, this this is the landscape of AI uh, in globe in US and India. Again, let's see. Where does India stand? Right? So India is number one in uh, skill penetration. Right? So as I was saying, India 
uh, is one of the uh, top, uh, in fact, second uh, supplier of AI skills into the world. Uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, number one in AI adoption by organization. Right? We are, uh, our Indian organizations are adopting AI. Uh, uh, definitely, we are low in readiness in terms of government. Right? We are 32. That has to improve, which is improving. Right? Uh, private uh, investments on AI is happening phenomenally, and I think uh, we are number four in that. Right? Uh, uh, in terms of startups getting funded, we are seven. Right? So uh, still, I would want it to be number one, two, three, but again, uh, more patient funds are required uh, in, in, in deep tech and AI startups. So I think, but again, I think this is an AI India story. Okay, so again, uh, sorry, we'll go back. Again, this is a this is a snapshot of India, but again, I think global. So we did a study called AI Adoption Index. How uh, India is getting, uh, you know, uh, or India is adopting AI, right? Uh, so our uh, our uh, number is from zero to four scale, and India is at two point four five. Right? To our amusement, I think uh, the most mature or most, uh, you know, uh, the industry which is adopting AI the most is industrial and automotive. It is at two point five two, right? And these are all computer vision use cases, predictive maintenance use cases, all of that, right? In uh, BFSI, if you see, uh, we always thought it was at the top, but again, I think they are a bit cautious in adapting. Yeah, they're still at the ML level, but again, I think they are at two point four two. Maturity of retail is also, you know, high two point five. So this is what uh, is a snapshot for India adoption. But again, you will find this snapshot to be a, you know, subset of the globe, right? So in globe also, uh, you know, the Indian uh, companies are. At the same level at, at what is getting adopted, at least at a developed company, country, right? So, US, Europe, I think you will find similar adoption. So, these are the top four sectors where uh, I think you should focus on, uh, you know, uh, enabling your customers who are there with you on AI right? because they are the first ones to adopt, right? then other things. Again, manufacturing, then retail, BFSI, and healthcare. That's how it is getting, getting uh, adopted in India, which is a sub uh, subset of globe. Right? So let me move that. Uh, again, this is a very uh, good example of uh, GenAI global landscape. So again, GenAI globally has been seen from five angles. Right, one is the infra. Right, who has the hardware? Who is developing the chip? Who has the cloud platform? Second is you know who has the foundation model. Third is who is using that to uh, do application. Fourth is which industries are adopting it. Fifth is what are the countries, you know, sort of adopting it? This is the global view. Now, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, if you see, uh, most of the companies are US companies, right? Who are uh, doing foundation innovation or doing chip manufacturing. <coughs> we'll see a India view of this in a minute. Just a second, guys. So this is an India view, right? Again, why it is, it is important to you because this is uh, the pool of startups or innovation or you know skill set what you might leverage to you know uh, collaborate part uh, you know uh, partner and, and, and go to your customers right so again chip we have no play we don't have uh, we we might have uh, uh, Nvidia AMD you know uh, presence here but we don't have manufacturing here from them we don't have uh, any big home based uh, hyperscaler. Right? We have E2E, certain extent, that's one of the hyperscaler who is working on GPU. And we have government NSM national supercomputing mission, and we have, uh, you know, CDAC who is powering that. Again, uh, we are uh, very nascent stage on the one and two, that is infra for chip and cloud and foundation model. Uh, you know, although there are discussions happening from various factors in government to build India foundation model, right? We are also party to that. But again, I think right now, nothing is right? Now, uh, on the application layer, uh, we are having phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably progress. Uh, recently, we came out with a report called Gen AI Startup Landscape. All of you might have access to that. Please have, have a look at that. So effectively, uh, uh, if I see in that and the larger startup, Gen, Gen AI Startup, we would have around 100 good Gen AI Startups, right? And, and they are uh, practically working on these areas. Search, you know, uh, multilingual dubbing, Basically, they can dub your uh, English to Hindi, Hindi to Telugu, Telugu to Tamil, whatever, right? With lip sync, right? Then sales and marketing use cases are there. 
coding uh, use cases are there. That's what they are working. Chatbots that's given for they are working. We don't didn't, didn't find anything on automation, but again, I think they are startups who are thinking of that. <clears throat> but globally, you found uh, this uh, you know uh, use cases getting built. Then you have uh, again knowledge management, you know uh, enterprise knowledge management and such. That's one use case. Then you have image and video generation tools. Then you have you know avatar, uh, you know uh, group AI. DBI, they are generating digital avatars for you. Again, you have uh, design, fashion industries, adapting Gen AI use cases. You have gaming, like Brahmagan is generating 3D models for games. Uh, you have music and audio generation. And you have, you know, uh, some startups working on full stack app, right? So that, this is what is happening. These are the key pillars, uh, you know, where various startups are building product and doing innovation. And these would be very uh, interesting to do also because I'm sure a lot of you would be working on multiple of these, right? So, uh, in terms of uh, you know your customer for various services, right? Uh, so you can take a snapshot of this and then you can utilize and think uh, uh, and see what is relevant for you, right? Now, uh, Gen AI services, I think Infi, TCS, Techem, uh, Eclux, EXL, Persistent, all of them are working on Gen AI services, and you know uh, uh, also. Uh, a very different model of delivery, right? Many of them are working with uh, the known one. They're also building their own practices. Not only they're building practice for customers, they're building their own internal capability using Gen AI to develop code, right? That's what they're doing. That's also opportunity for you, right? Again, uh, industry, as we spoke, I think the fashion, manufacturing, BFSI, uh, tech, uh, telco, uh, publishing, entertainment, legal, bio, pharma, gates, all of these are definitely utilizing, uh, you know, various uh, innovations happening through Gen AI, right? So this is the landscape, right? Uh, okay. So sort of how much time I have more? Uh, can you prompt me that, please? Yeah, another 20 minutes, uh, Ankit. Okay. So probably we'll go five to eight, 10 minutes more, and then we'll pause uh, and take questions. Right? So, okay. Sure. Yeah. Again, I think this was the landscape view I wanted to give you, right? So till now. But one major thing which is happening on Gen AI and AI is uh, there are major effort happening from various factors from government on regulation, right? So uh, I think uh, I will give you a snapshot of what's happening in the world, right? So uh, US has came out with a paper which is innovation the advantage. Right? UK is coming out, also came out with a paper which is again, uh, you know, inno uh, innovation uh, focus or co-innovation. Then Canada has come out with a, a you know, sort of an, uh, 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 probably uh, a paper called C27, which again focuses on personal, uh, you know, business data at the same time, your uh, AI. Right? So again, these are still paper and at an early stage. But major is this one, right, which is the EU AI Act. Right? So <clears throat> probably I can spend two, three minutes on that. Right? So again, it's a, it's a first comprehensive global AI legislation, right? Uh, and, and it covers software and logic, right? Important part is this is horizontal application. So it's not vertical uh, regulator or probably but the sector focus. Okay. Uh, and, and it's sec sector agnostic. Important part is this is risk based approach. Right? Again, we'll see this briefly what is uh, risk based approach. Uh, and it, it, it definitely <clears throat> accounts for a very severe penalty, which can lead to four to six percent of your global turnover, not your that country or EU turnover, right? uh, if you're defaulted. Uh, and, and and I think right now it's it's uh, in the EU Parliament. I think uh, uh, in, uh, it will uh, it will be effectively you know uh, uh, tabled. And anticipation is that two years or probably within two to three two to four years it will be passed. Right? So and and then after it's passed, uh, the companies will have two years grace period to you know enable themselves. Right? That's what is the current view. Again, I will not go into other integrity, but again the point is that. It is extraterritorial, right? So, which means that if you are sitting in India or sitting anywhere in the world and deploying services there, it has AI. It has to be uh, bound by this uh, law in a framework, right? So, and, and they can come and you know uh, probably uh, have actions or probably uh, certain things on you in India, right? Uh, major impact is Brussels impact. Basically, once like GDPR came out, every other country has to. Or every other enterprises who are working you has to build something on that and countries also came out with their own law right? uh, uh, now we'll see briefly what is risk-based approach again they have came out with four uh four categories of risk one is unacceptable risk which is you know very sublingual techniques which can harm or distort human judgment right? 
like bio biometric like right? uh, uh, FRT usage in policy was getting thought through, and this is one example where they are you know prohibiting that uh, social schooling by public authorities. That's also one thing which they are prohibiting. Right? Uh, if you see the next, so this is prohibited list. The other is uh, high risk, right? I mean, heavily regulated application. Here we see education, medical devices, uh, you know, safety. A lot of lot of this are supposed to give is this seven and few more obligations, right? But again, majorly you have to have a risk management system, quality management system. You have to have documentation. You have to have data governance, transparency, human oversight. You know, you should system should be accurate, robust. Cyber security should be there. All of that. That's what <clears throat> are the obligations. So this is the category here. Again, uh, the other category is minimal risk, right? I think this is more, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, probably uh, more lenient, right? Here you need to just uh, say that you are using, uh, you should be transparent, right? Again, here emotion uh, detection is one, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, generating uh, generating or deep fake contents is other, right? Again, determining social categories for your product, that's that. Right? So again, <clears throat> this you have to just uh, be transparent that you are using techniques. Again, the other categories for the model, you have to call for it. You have to just, you know, <clears throat> maintain this seven obligations. This is basically the EU Act, right? Now, uh, again, I will I'll skip this and come back to this if we have time. Uh, I think I, I skipped one slide, but I will tell you, you know, uh, what I was supposed to talk, right? So, uh, so it's very important in this day, right? Whenever uh, we are... Uh, delivering, deploying, or building any AI services globally, we have to definitely keep ethical and responsible measures in check, right? Based on the countries and the, the you know, the geos uh, regulation, uh, you can definitely start doing it from day one, or you can always get on that, you know, uh, journey in midway also. Because, uh, uh, you know, right now, regulations are in discussion, but they are not far. Like GDPR hit us, this also is on the way, few years here and there. But again, I think the important point is whenever we work on any system which has AI enabled, AI deployed, it has software or logic on AI, I think, or knowledge on AI, I think we have to be, uh, you know, having certain uh, responsible AI, you know, measures. As NASCOM, I think we have uh, done good, uh, you know, uh, effort and we have built assets which definitely can be used by SMEs and a lot of other people who are uh, focused on, you know, such AI developments. Uh, so we came out with four products, uh, four, not products, four <laughs> For basically assets which can be leveraged by anyone, which is open and available, which is one is maturity assessment tool, second is government's governance framework, third is architect's guide, and fourth is basically recently we came out with something called responsible AI guidance for Gen AI. Right? If you're using Gen AI, what should be your obligation? Those are normative obligation, but again, that's what I think these are initial steps. You all uh, definitely, if you're using AI in your services, you have to think on that. Uh, I will urge. Uh, you know, very highly to do that. Uh, but again, I think these assets are available. You can, uh, if, if needed, I think we can send you a mail. And if you require to speak me, I can send you the detail. Uh, it's all available on a website and anyone can go and use that definition. Right? So uh, briefly, you know, uh, I want to cover a message. When we use uh, AI, uh, either in our services, we build products on AI, I think we should be responsible and trustworthy. Right? So that's the uh, very base and, you know, utmost requirement. Because you know the days are changing as we cover. Right? So, uh, so briefly, this is what I wanted to cover. But again, I think uh, this is one view. Again, a subset of global. Uh, you know, these are the use cases what we uh, see uh, and investments happening in AI. Again, retail hyper personalization is very important. Uh, you know, uh, uh, integrated customer journey is important. Uh, five digital is very important. Right. So, uh, healthcare. Uh, you know, uh, uh, patient uh, engagement and quality clinical data across various. Uh, you know, uh, hospital is important. Uh, manufacturing uh, 4.0 use cases, QC use cases, uh, you know, reduction of error rate, that's a very, you know, evident people are investing in that. Banking, customer service, uh, again, hyper personalization, anti monetary, uh, anti money laundering, fraud detection, all those use cases are getting built. Utilities, definitely, you know, supply chain forecasting, ESG, uh, you know, defect detection, all of this are getting built. Right? So these are the rough view of. What are the use cases, top three, four use cases, which are getting, uh, you know, uh, deployed or, you know, invested by various uh, sectors. Right? So I think with that, I would want to pause. I will want to go here. Uh, uh, we'll discuss briefly. I think uh, as we go next, we'll have these two 
टॉपिक्स कवर्ड बट अगेन आई विल पॉज एंड आई विल टेक एनी क्वेश्चन और कमेंट्स इफ एनीथिंग इज देयर राइट तो अंकित आई आई बिलीव देयर आर फ्यू क्वेश्चंस ऑन ऑन द क्यू एन ए विंडो कैन यू जस्ट एड्रेस देम दैट विल बी ग्रेट हां यस 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 तो फर्स्ट इज हाउ आर यूज केसेस फॉर जीआईएस मैपिंग गेटिंग ड्राफ्टेड बाय इंडस्ट्री एग्री इज वन यूज केस राइट सो यील्ड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन सो जीआईएस इज गेटिंग यूज सो जीआईएस प्लस योर यू नो क्रॉप और यील्ड डेटा डिस्ट्रिक्ट वाइज we we work with someone to build hyper local uh, you know uh, farm based data which can uh, be tied up with uh, you know the gis data and which can help uh, farmers uh, increase their yield right that's one second uh, the the use case around gis is you know uh, again by government right to uh, do predict not predictive do effective disaster recovery right uh, that's the second use case which we are hearing right a lot of such use cases are there right agree uh, uh you know logistics all of that right? so uh, uh, that's first question second how to cheat gen ai output by human so <laughs> so uh, chat gpt uh, there are uh, effective uh, jailbreak mechanisms available where uh, you know you can uh, so there are there are boundaries which are set by open ai but you can use jailbreak to get uh, you know more interesting answer and that is the question what you had Uh, but again i think uh, uh, at large uh, a lot of mechanisms are getting developed to detect what is gen ai development so uh, transparency uh, and you know uh, uh, laws or drug laws transparency obligations are coming where people have to uh, you know uh, probably define or uh, tell that this image is generated by dal mid journey is this content is generated through xyz so that's what is getting done uh, Where to get list of companies using AI alone? I think uh, startup there's a list, but AI alone, I think uh, every company is using AI these days. I think uh, it's very, uh, very uh, you know uh, inappropriate for a company not to use AI if if they have to uh, sustain and grow. Right. So uh, both of the companies are using AI. Again, the sectors what I showed uh, in the adoption index. Uh, again, it's a it's a free report. You can go and download on uh, uh, you know Nasdaq's website. uh it will tell you which industries are getting you know uh are adopting ai first manufacturing first which we saw retail then uh, you know we first and then healthcare so and, and then you can have a subset of those companies the top leaders or whatever you want to so what's the common use of application of ai i think we discuss uh, a lot on that right so i will i will skip on that okay how uh, do uh, ram ask how do we manage conversation given to given the token limit is restricted with several gpd versions okay so embedding is a technique ram which is used to uh, you know embedding is tacky right so again gpt has limit of 30 to 1000 tokens okay uh, but if you use cloud which has 100k tokens so the token size increases again 30 uh, so it's like 75 percent of words equal to you know token so 1050 words is equal to 1000 tokens so that's a ratio typically uh, uh, probably approximately we can use that but again i think the point is that you can use models which have larger bit plot as 100k now you can use stacking and embedded uh, embedding techniques to uh, have large content of data push in and get extract on that so all all very use cases so there are techniques available by the way yeah. uh ankit there are two questions which is there uh, on the chat uh, chat box so uh, can you just look at one is come from uh, you know nidhi uh, she is asking uh, you have spoken about regulation in details and touched upon uh, the different areas of risk governance would you like to able to talk about why business should proactively consider risk governance and not just for compliance perspective yeah yeah very important i think see uh, regulation is brought in by government right but again as as businesses if we start self regulating right uh, four things will happen right first is definitely you will build trust in your customers right? so if your customers especially eu and you know global customers you show that you are having uh, you know responsible ai methodology is implemented they will trust you more right second uh, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, probably uh, customers who will give you added advantage if you are doing that right? so that second third definitely you know you will be ahead of the curve when regulation comes you are ahead 
uh, EU is on the very strong side bringing regulation, but again, again other countries are still on the white paper. Even India is on a white paper state. You know? So, uh, so you will build that trust with those you know governments that you know you as a company, you as a industry is self-regulating, so that they will give you opportunity. So, uh, what we believe in Nasdaq is it has to be a uh, government-led uh, you know industry pro innovation set regulation. What that means is government should invite industry and, and, and sectors to basically work on a self regulation mechanism, which can effectively help them. So that's what we believe. That, that is the third thing. Fourth, again, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, big techs, they have seen various big attrition happening because they are not following the responsible, you know, uh, uh, ethical measure. Right? So you will have better retain ability uh, of your employees and customers. So, uh, and there have been examples, I don't uh, recall exactly, but there have been uh, uh, significant increase in, uh, you know, uh, what is a uh, customer acquisition and customer uh, business funnel because you are using trust uh, worthy AI, yeah, right? So, that gives you that, you know, comfort uh, or customer the comfort, right? So, uh, there's one example, okay, I, I think uh, uh, if, if, uh, there's more uh, interest. I can talk one on one also. You can drop me a note, right? But again, I think uh, uh, I will pause on that answer. So, what's the sec second question, sir? There's one more question. In the chat. Question coming from Sumana. She's asking since uh, most of the companies present here are MSMEs, uh, which who may not have the access to huge amount of data, and data is the primary driver of the AI. So, what what is your th on your thoughts on the same? How they can leverage quality or data and that to the vast amount of data that that is needed for AI. The large amount of data is needed for B two C sort of use cases, but again B two B, you need uh, your customer data, right? and customer data will come with your own uh, you know current uh, domain and use case and and what is the gap you are identified to solve for the customers. Uh, he might give you some speak. Generally, how it is done in enterprises is like this. I will tell you. Um, you know, you get mock data from customer. From that, you build mock dashboards. You build mock, uh, you know, sort of uh, scenarios, which has been agreed and accepted. Then you get again some more le level of data, which you again showcase that you know your models and your you know whole system is uh, effectively uh, getting you know uh, or delivering what customer needs. And then at the later point, you get production data. Right? No one gives you production data on day one. So. For you, you have to build a find a gap in customer scenario, identify the gap and build a use case. And, and first, start with mock, right? Uh, you might have to do a mock, uh, you know, or you have to do a POC or demo. You have to build that capacity for or probably capability in your team. Uh, and, and most of the enterprises B two B sort of scenarios are with customer data, which they give you based on the contract or probably understanding you and they have. Right? So that's how it will work. So in, in case in case uh, some of the companies are uh, planning to uh, you know implement AI solution internally, okay, then what would be the starting for for themselves for internal application? Yeah, categorization of the pain points, prioritization of pain points. First, categorize what are the you know use cases which they want to deploy. Then prioritize that. In the priority, pick top three. You know uh, either you have internal capacity to see how what are the you know sort of solution for that or, or you can call for startups or uh, other SMEs who can come and support you uh, or even enterprises in, the, in that journey, right? So I think uh, prioritization and uh, effective, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, prototyping is important, right? So again, in the, in the top three, you start with one, two, three. First, you try to create an effective prototype and a solution. Again, the, the way I told uh, for SMEs to give and, you know, uh, solution for an uh, enterprise, the same is, uh, you know, uh, probably for you also, right? You have to start with the, the day one, you will not know what is the end goal you will need or end, uh, you know, sort of uh, objective you will achieve from that analytics, AI, whatever, right? So you, you might start from descriptive. You might start gathering data, descript, descriptive visual analysis, will get. then you will probably go to predictive, prescriptive. And based on you know, your uh, need, you might go to the top level. So that's how you have to do it. Yeah, so uh, Ankit, uh, though we are about to run out of time, there are many, you know, many of the uh, people who are requesting for the slides. Is it possible to share the slides or any extract? Though we are recording and we will be uploading this entire video on our YouTube channel. Uh, what else we can do regarding the content? Uh, some of this I can share. I can, I can share with you, Dorman. You can share with everyone. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah. Done. Okay. Great. Good. Uh, any, any questions you want to take, or we are up to the time? We are the time. The no, I think uh, we are almost. I think we we should proceed for closer. Uh, anything else that you would like to uh, share before we? Yeah. Last comment. I think this was just the start. This was a precursor, right? So now in the next discussion, what we have this this is right. What you see, uh, how you know you can have AI project uh, life cycle effectively, you know, uh, deployed for your customers. How can you build a successful AI team in practice? That's the first topic. Next topic we'll cover. The next third topic is data management and AI adoption strategies. Right. So uh, a lot more detail we'll go. This was just in you know sort of an uh, outlook. Right. So we'll we'll do that. And I will take a pause and I will. Hand it over to Malik. Malik, uh, you want to close or uh, Shigan? Anyone you want to close? So, yeah, thank you, thank you, Anki. This was very, very insightful, uh, and uh, you know, I think it creates more curiosity, uh, and not just curiosity, but uh, importance uh, for us to understand what's really uh, the real, uh, you know, meat in what we're talking generally, right? So I think. Uh, building an AI business or building business around AI or how to even adapt AI is really very important to all of us. And I think that new uh, future, the next sessions will be very, very insightful from that perspective. Uh, and I'm sure, and I hope that everyone really loved this. Uh, I can see that from the questions which are being asked uh, and the you know uh, request for slides that people are requesting for, everyone's requesting for getting this information further, so they can actually look at it. So it, it, it does certainly, shows uh, the you know rich content uh, uh, ankit and the information that you have shared thank you so much uh, yeah hello what points you have yeah so so and and thank you very much uh, to everyone who have joined today and yeah. who you are still around. Uh, you know, uh, just an announcement: we'll be having the next round of uh, you know workshop uh, in the first few, first week of August. We'll announce it soon, and one more uh, towards the end of uh, next month. Yeah. So stay tuned for the next two uh, sessions. Uh, we are pretty sure that you will find uh, you will find the sessions quite interesting and also yep. quite insightful uh, for you to kickstart or give an impetus to your AI journey. And uh, and thank you very much, Ankit and Molik sir, for being Pleasure. here till the end. And and thank you, guide. Uh, thank you for guiding thank us about yeah. the. NASCOM plans on AI and uh, what the industry yes. uh, thinks about AI uh, in, in coming days. Uh, thank you again and stay tuned for so, more updates. Yeah, on so this there's day. one, one uh, request which I see in the chat is the request for the YouTube link for the recorded session. Uh, yeah, so so please, um, here is the you know YouTube channel, NASCOM, please uh, visit uh, NASCOM SME Connect. Uh, you will get all the uh, you know videos which uh, offer all the programs that we do under the SME Council. Uh, we will soon upload this uh, video probably by Monday. Uh, the same will be uploaded. You can refer it for your for your internal consumption. You know from next week onwards. Yeah. Thank you. Super. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Friends. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend, friends. Thank you. Take care. Bye.